Have you ever thought about being able to send encrypted messages through the blockchain? Where only the destination wallet can actually view the message. That's right, now this is possible using the Nulls message signature. But I confess to you that this is not a widely used function at the moment. However, it can be extremely useful for some specific users, besides being a very interesting feature. It's worth noting that we are not using a tool from a centralized platform, such as a traditional company that is susceptible to all government rules, and may end up storing backups of these conversations, not truly ensuring privacy between users. On the other hand, we are talking about a decentralized blockchain network. But enough beating around the bush, let's see how this works. To use this tool, you'll need two things. The first is to have the Nabox wallet previously configured in your browser, and the second is to access the website crypt.nulls.io. I'll leave the link below in the description to make it easier for you. Access the link? Okay, now you'll click here on Nabox to connect the wallet, and choose the account you want to connect to, in this case, I'll connect with my account noob1, just for testing and to show you. After connecting, I'll click here on Generate Multi-Chain Address, and then the system will generate a compatible address. The interesting thing here, is that being a tool created by the Nabox wallet, you can use it together with other blockchain networks besides Nulls. Let's keep it exactly on the Nulls network, and start using these first two options. The first one, called Sign, is precisely for you to sign a message. I'll put the message leave a like here. So, go ahead and leave a like on this video. Well, now I want to sign this message with my wallet. Its ending is 3TDZ, you can see? This is the end of my wallet. So now I'll sign it OK? It seems I forgot to switch to the Nulls network, so I'll change it here and select the Nulls network. Ready! So, the network selected here on the website must be the same as the one selected in the wallet OK? Now I'll click below on the sign button, and in the pop-up that appeared, I'll sign the message written leave a like. Now I'll copy this code so we can verify the message. So, I can send this code to any user, and they will be able to see who signed this message. In this case, it was the wallet with the ending 3TDZ, and the message is leave a like. And what happens if I change users and connect with another wallet as if it were another user? Well, I'll connect here with my second account called Noob2 to show you. I'll connect here Noob2 and confirm authorization. Again, I'll generate the compatible address. And as you can see, the end of the wallet is different. I am indeed connected with the Noob2 wallet. If I paste that code here, I can verify who signed it. Initially, some people might think that this function is not useful. But what if I tell you that you've already used this function several times to log into a website? Typically, when using decentralized applications in Web3, when you log in with your wallet, the website always asks you to sign a message, which is exactly what we just did by signing that message. So, the website will find who signed it and understand that you are the owner. After all, only you can sign with your wallet. In this tutorial, we use this function as an ordinary user, but it is widely used in Web3. Now, let's see how encrypted messages work. Let's simulate a message sent between the Noob1 account, that is, the first person, and the Noob2 account. The Noob2 account needs to send the public key. Don't worry, sending a public key is not dangerous, so just send it to the Noob1 account. You can say that this is your public key and ask the sender to send the message you need. This message will always be secret and kept extremely secure. In this case, the sender, who is a user of the Noob1 account, will need to access the platform with their wallet and click on the encrypt tab. In this field, the sender should enter the message. I'll put the message leave a like here again as an example, but this time I'll add several exclamation points just so you can see that it's a different message. In the field below, the sender should enter the address of who will receive this message. In this example, it will be the public key of the Noob2 account. In other words, Noob1 is sending this encrypted message to Noob2. Now, just click on Encrypt below, and the system will generate this code, which is precisely the encrypted message. Now, just copy this code and send it to Noob2 through another conversation. You can send it and say, check what's inside. And what will Noob2 do? He will need to log into his wallet, connect to the platform, go to the Decrypt tab, and then paste this code into this field, which is precisely the encrypted message. He will have to click on Decrypt and sign the transaction by clicking Decrypt in the wallet. As you can see, the encrypted message was leave a like. But what happens if another unauthorized user manages to access this code? Can they read the entire content of the message? Well, let's test it. 
I'll change my user to another one that I haven't used in this video. I'll choose this one, Metacell BABT. Okay, let's test it with the address of this account. I'll go back here again because it seems it didn't connect. I'll click on not connected, select it to connect, and click on confirm authorization. There you go, it changed, and now I'm connected with the Metacell account. This is my third wallet account, meaning a third user. Now, let's try to decrypt that code. I clicked on decrypt here, and will try to sign by clicking on the wallet's decrypt pop-up. As you can see from this error, this literally is not possible. Only the wallet address that had the public key registered at the time of sending will be able to see the message. Even the sender who sent the message can no longer view it. I'll show you. I connected to the Noob1 account, which was the account that wrote the message, and as you can see, with this account, it's also not possible to view the message. Only the wallet account Noob2 that has the public key registered to receive the message can see it. So only Noob1 can view it. As you could see, only the end user. In other words, only the recipient can see the message inside that encrypted code. You define the end user through the public key, and not the wallet address. So, the user who will receive the message will need to log into the platform, connect their wallet correctly, get the public key, send it to the user who will write the message, and then this user will have to send it the same way I showed you. After that, the sender just needs to take that generated code of the encrypted message, and send it to the end user. Any other person who manages to access this encrypted code, will not be able to access the content inside the message. Only the destination user can do that. Let me give you an example. Imagine you're talking to someone normally, and you need to send a message extremely securely. So, you ask that person for the public key generated on the Nulls platform, and as soon as they send it to you, you encrypt that message, send the code to them, and say, decrypt and read the message. Again, only the owner of the wallet account that has the public key registered to receive the message will be able to visualize the content of the message. So, even if someone hacks your WhatsApp that contains this first conversation, that person will only have access to the encrypted message and will not be able to decrypt it and access the content. So, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is a very specific function. However, it can be extremely useful in certain cases, and in my opinion, it is extremely interesting as well. But what about you? Did you also find this function interesting? Then leave a like on this video. Take the opportunity to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can be sure not to miss the next content and interesting information I'll bring to you. And don't forget, the end user will need the code of the encrypted message to decrypt and access the content. Well, that's it for today. I'll end it here. Thank you very much for your audience, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.